able to handle rendering an image. So we want to say, there's an image, render it to the screen at a certain location. So that's really our next method, which is going to be the render at point method, um, which I'm going to pop into here. Okay, so this takes two um, arguments. We've got the point, which is the X and the Y coordinates of where we want to render it on the screen. And we then have the center of image argument, which as we said, if we have yes being passed in, it means that this point will be treated as the center of our image and that's where it will be rendered. If we pass in no, then this point will be treated as the bottom left-hand corner of our image and that's where it will be put onto the screen. So <clears throat> as part of rendering the texture, uh, we want to um, basically pay attention to the texture offset X and Y, because remember, we could be rendering an image that has an offset. In other words, we're not rendering the entire texture that this image points to, we're rendering just a portion of the texture that this image is referring to. So we create a new CG point, um, use, and the X and the Y is basically using the texture offset um, for X and the texture offset for Y. And then we're calling this other routine here, this other method called render sub image at point. And this is the next method we're going to create. Um, and it's good because it means that we can call this either directly if we want to render something to the screen, um, or we can call it from within the render at point, passing in the values as necessary. So we're, we're basically limiting the number of, of methods that are actually rendering stuff to the screen. So that when we need to make a change to the render code inside here, we only have to go to one place and whether you're doing a render sub image or a render at point, it's all in effect going to be using the same piece of code. Okay, so it just keeps things nice and tidy. And what we're doing to uh, render a sub image is we're passing in a point at which the actual image will be rendered. We're then passing in the offset, okay, which is the location within the image that we want to actually take the texture from the sub image from. And that's this point up here that we have just created. And we're then defining the image width and the image height and also whether it should be centered or not. Okay, and again, center is being passed through as one of our, um, one of our options that we're putting inside the, uh, the method here, one of our arguments. So pretty simple method, um, but obviously it doesn't work without the render at sub image method, which is the next one that, uh, that I'm gonna put in. Now this has got a little bit more in it because this is we're getting closer now to actually rendering to the screen so there's a bit more information we need to be calculating in here so it's a slightly larger method so if i pop this method in okay you can see it's a slightly bigger method that we've got here and what we're doing <clears throat> is we're taking in all of these things that we've just run through the point at which we're drawing it the point at which we want to start taking a sub image the width and the height of that sub image and also whether we want to render centered or not and this is where we're actually starting to do a little bit of maths to calculate what the texture coordinates are so remember that i said that when we actually draw something in opengl for our needs we set up basically two arrays we set up one array which holds the coordinates of our texture and we set up another array later on which holds the vertices for our quad in other words the shape uh, in which we are drawing um, our image. So for each of these, we have an X and a Y coordinate for each of the four points. So because we're drawing a quad, okay, it's got four points, we need to define the four corners of the texture that we want to actually place within our quad. And that's what we're doing here. So I'm creating a brand new um, float array called texture coordinates. And inside that, I'm defining each of the X and Y coordinates for them. So we have eight altogether. So we have X here. So this is our first X point. And then we have our first Y point. And then we have our next vertices is gonna be X. And then we have Y and it goes down to the second line there. And then we have X, Y, X, Y. Okay. Now, what you can see here is I'm using the things that we've defined as part of the image to calculate where we need to go and grab the texture from. So I'm saying the texture width ratio, this is how many um, texels are represented by one pixel in our image, is multiplied by the number of the sub-image width. So how many pixels wide is our sub-image to be? And I'm multiplying that by the texels, and that gives me a texture coordinate inside our texture, because it can only be from zero to one. So this will give us a texture coordinate. And I'm then saying, well, that's fine. So I want that's the width, but where do I want that width to start from? Well, that width starts from the offset point. 
Okay, and you could have this calculation the way around to maybe make more sense, but this is the way I've done it. Um, so there again, we say we want the texture, texture width ratio multiplied by our offset point X. So X is how far into the image do we want to start taking our, our, our texture and width is then how far from that point in do we want to actually take it. So it's, it's fairly simple maths. Um, we're just working out the actual coordinates in texture coordinates and texture coordinates can only be a value from zero to one maximum. And we're identifying them for each of the points on our quad. So I do the same for here. So I do the same for um, texture height ratio um, times offset. Okay, so you can tell here, you, you can look at this calculation and work out the point that I'm actually working to. Because I'm taking the, the width here, as well as the um, X offset, but from here, I'm just taking the Y offset. You can see that I'm doing the, this is giving me a calculation for the bottom right-hand corner of our um, texture. So I'm actually saying the bottom right-hand point in our texture is located here. Um, because I'm not looking at the height of the texture, I'm just taking the base Y position of the texture. The next one says I'm now going from the bottom right-hand corner, okay, which is X, which is the width of the, the sub-image we want, all the way to the height of the sub-image. So I've got height in here now. Okay, so this top line was the bottom right-hand corner of our image. This is now the top right-hand corner of our image. Okay, that's what we're calculating there. We then go from the top right-hand corner of our image down to the very bottom um, left-hand corner of our image. Okay, so we've drawn a triangle, basically, if you can imagine. Um, we've done our bottom left-hand corner. Sorry, we've done our bottom right-hand corner. We've now done our top right-hand corner, and we're now gonna do the bottom left-hand corner. Okay, and as you, if you sort of draw that on a piece of paper, you'll see that that does make a triangle. Um, and the reason is, is that we are later on gonna be using something called a triangle strip which is um, because of the way that OpenGL ES works on the iPhone, we're gonna be drawing all of our shapes using triangles. Um, so to draw a square, you have to make two triangles basically, but you can do that with just four points as we're doing here. So we go bottom right, top right, and then bottom left, okay? And then by going from bottom left to top left, which is what this calculation here is doing, okay? That is enough of an information for OpenGL to understand what the two triangles are and it will know that's a square and it will map the texture on that accordingly. That sounds a bit complicated. I've maybe not described that as well as it could be described, but if you go onto the Nihi site, which there's a link from tutorial one, you'll be able to see a, probably a better description as to how this texture mapping stuff works. Um, but that's what we've done. We've now identified within our big texture, the coordinates of the bit of the texture that we're interested in, okay? Um, that's going to be the same whether we're taking the whole texture or a sub portion of the texture because we're using these items like sub image width and offset point um, if there was the width was the full width and the offset point was zero we'd be looking at taking the whole image um, because we can also define sub points we can take smaller parts as well so we're just using the same piece of code whether we're taking the whole image or a sub part of the image the next thing we need to do is we need to calculate the vertices or the points for our actual quad, the actual box inside which that image is going to be mapped. So to do that, we need to work out the width and the height of our quad. Uh, and we're doing that by taking the sub image width again, and we're multiplying that by the scale. So this is how we're doing a very simple scale. We're saying whatever the width is, multiply.